Welcome to my channel. Thank you for tuning in. And I want to introduce everyone to uh, my new series. I'm calling it the original series. In this, I'm going to review um, a few watches from my collection and they'll all be OEM uh, and they'll all be Seiko. Um, as I've probably mentioned before, uh, I started off collecting purely Seikos uh, and that is why I actually do uh, just collect Seikos. And I just love the Seiko brand. Uh, even though I've gotten into uh, the Chinese watch market at the moment. But then again, they are powered by Seiko movements. So let's get into it. I've got this beauty of a watch here. You may or may not have seen this before. And this is a quartz movement watch. And it's known as the Seiko Perpetual Calendar Chronograph. SPC 123P1. Now, the reason I want to review this watch, I believe this is one of the most underrated um, quartz watches out there. Literally, I've not seen any hype um, around this watch um, on Facebook pages, forums, etc. Um, but I don't know why. So that's why hopefully I want to review this, bring um, give this watch some of the credit that it deserves um, and the respect that you know um, it deserves and just to bring it out to the people that don't know about this so to start off let's cover the movement so as I mentioned it's a quartz movement um, Seikos have many 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 quartz movements out there um, and they differ the difference between them is basically just the complications this is a 7086 OAC0. So 7086 is the actual caliber um, of the movement. And it's a, as I mentioned before, a perpetual calendar. We'll go on to that uh, a little later on and explain what that means. The main thing um, I want to focus on is the caliber and the functionality and the complications this watch um, brings you. But I want to start off with just purely the aesthetics of the watch. Um, it's unfortunate, you know, the actual picture. So if you're going to search this watch, the picture that you see um, is a dead picture. Honestly, it does not show you what this watch is. Um, you need to have it in real life to truly, truly appreciate the level of workmanship. This was one of the first Seikos that um, I actually bought when I was just learning about the brand. Um, and this... To be honest with you, says it all um, about the capability of Seiko and what they actually bring um, to the table in the watch game. The first thing that strikes out instantly, obviously, is this blue metallic paint or color on the seconds hand on the subdials. It's almost an electric blue. And this is the first thing that, as soon as you look at the watch, it just immediately pops out at you, catches your attention. And what I want you to do is, I want to zoom in here, just pay close attention. And look at the level of workmanship on this. Look how clean cut the hands are. I mean, I haven't got a macro lens. If you went that way, you could probably see a lot more defects or you could see some sheen marks, but... To the naked eye, you can't see even the slightest imperfection. Super high polished hands. Just take a moment to appreciate just all these tiny, tiny little details that make it what it is. You can see you've got three subdials on the main dial. And just look at the, the dimension of the dial, look at the levels. It's a textured dial, sort of a waffle uh, pattern. You see this pattern on um, the waffle straps. Even the indices, let's have a close look. See, look at that level of detail along the indices. You've got chamfered edges on the indices. Down the middle, you've got this, what do you call it, brushing? Just these straight lines, amazing level of quality. Look at that level of detail. 
and even on the sub dial way you've got the days of the week just look at all that to the naked eye you probably won't appreciate this but if you know anything about manufacturing to get these small small features on like these sub dials uh, it's a lot of work um, and there's a very high level of machining involved um, and manufacturing of course so let's look at the seconds dial again you've got you know what it's the camera can't even hack it let's get some focus on there but you can see that same sub dial it's got two different on the seconds one there um, two different textures so you've got this circular engraving on the dial with the 20, 40, 60 markers look how crisp that printing is and then you've got your alarm function which also doubles up as a timer so on the outside you've got 15, 30, 45, 60 minutes and in the center you've got your 24 hour alarm clock now, now look at the beveled hands again highly polished sign that looks too brushed this is how crazy the shine is on this watch um, the camera <laughs> is losing the will to focus crisp clear printing and you've got this uh, chapter ring as you can see it's curved so the dial sits in very crisp, crisp, sorry, clear printing. Everything is very legible. And this watch is so underrated. And there's probably many of you out there that uh, don't know, don't even know what it is. And the most surprising thing is the actual price. Uh, the price from when I last looked checked. You could pick one up for around 170, around between 160 to 180 pounds. Um, I don't know if they are discontinued, but I have seen some for sale. I've even seen them on Argos clearance for, uh, I believe, 100 pounds. And they come in a few different color options. For me, um, this color option, the white, is the best because this is the only one that comes with these blue metallic um, sub dial hands and the main seconds hand. The black one, um, you don't see that level of detail. You don't see uh, the metallic hands, obviously. But and this watch is packed full of features. You know, when I um, like right now, I'm trying to hold myself from um, just blurting out all sorts of uh, things about this watch. This really is a fantastic watch. You can see just the level of finishing. Um, the quality, you don't get this on any of the autos um, that Seiko make. You know, um, regardless of what people might say to the next comment, believe me, you know, even the just the level of detail and the features on this watch, you're looking at Grand Seiko level. Um, not in terms of the, the polishing or the quality, just what they've done to this watch, the features they've put onto the dial. You know, a lot of your um, automatic, you know, mid-range divers, um, you haven't got this level of detail only if you go into the grand seiko spring drives that's where you got all these you know fancy dials and um, all these slight little features on there so just how crazy is this watch well i'll tell you surely let's go around and just see that the general finishing on the watch is absolutely brilliant nice curved along the side of the case this camera is not focusing uh, yet. Yeah, brushed along the sides. Very fine brushing. It's a 22 mil bracelet. Uh, sorry, yeah, 22 mil, but uh, it does taper down from like a 21 um, to a 19. But your button, you've got your chronograph pushers, which, are hot, which has got the high polish. And you've got a domed cr uh, crown, no screwing. 
and that is a lovely bracelet as well so this watch it gives you a lot a lot for your money and the thing with chronographs you know they can get quite uh, boring and what I mean there's there's nothing exciting about them uh, a lot of them are just just the same uh, and this brings something very different um, to the chronograph line even the clasp is nice some nice engraving there butterfly style buttons on the side it's a standard press clasp flat case back hollow end links and push pins on the connectors let's give you some measurements um, diameter is 40 mil across so it's it's not a very large watch um, however, the lug to lug is just under 52 mil, and you're looking at a 10 mil thickness um, on the case, so it's not too thick, and it does have a somewhat decent slim profile. And this comes with a 100 meters um, water. They've got 10 bar water resistance. Now, uh, something strange, when you do look at some specs, some sites said this has a sapphire crystal. Um, I've checked it with the diamond hardness tester um, and it's coming up as non-sapphire. So I'll just look into that a bit deeper to, just to see. So all right, now that's out of the way. Now I wanna take you to the really, really cool part with this watch. Um, just, this is an absolute crazy watch. So now, Okay, looking at the dial, you might think that's a bit busy. I wonder what the hell is going on there. So this watch, the comp is packed full of features. It's got that many complications on there um, that you don't see in your normal uh, chronograph watches. So let's start off with what we can see at the moment. So obviously on the main two dials, you've got obviously the minute hand and the hour hand. So that's telling you the time. Okay, so there are no markers um, for the hours, but it's not needed. You know where they are. Okay. So the second thing now, if you look at this large seconds hand, you'll notice it's stationary. So what is it pointing at? So just focus on, let me get something here. So if you wanna just focus on the crescent here, right? That's pointing over the number 28. That is the date okay so we look at the top sub dial it's a friday which is that's the day today and you've got your seconds on the sub dial here so now if you press the first button see where that's gone okay so if you look along the side of this dial here you've got the actual you've got 12 months but the way it goes it misses a month so you got january February in the middle between March, April, May, June, July, etc. Now, you see what that did? It automatically went back to the date. How fantastic is that? It's like this watch. Um, this is the beauty of quartz. You can have, uh, you can program it. So there's like a mini computer in here. So there we go. Watch, it's gone back now. Okay, so let's press it again. And where does it take us? So now it's taken us to the leap year so the it's called a perpetual calendar and you've seen other watches that uh, have this name but this calendar is programmed into this watch now wait for it until the year 2100 and when i read that when i was just looking at the watch that blew my mind so you don't need to touch this watch until to the year 2100 now if you've got this watch right now, like I have, you'll be dead long before, you know, you're ever going to reach that. So just imagine that you don't, and it makes up for um, the leap years. The only thing you need to do is daylight savings is adjust the time. So look how automatically it just comes back. So you press it now, let's go to the month. 
leap year and it's reset. Now, when I initially got this, and even now, you just feel um, just amazed at how all the hands are moving together. Um, and that's the part where, you know, it's just the child inside you comes alive. You can just watch this all day. So let's just, let's see what it does. So when you pop the um, hand out, there's crying out, sorry. And that's ready for you to set the time. Everything's just gone to zero. Um, but I don't want that. I'm going to put it back. Accuracy, obviously Quartz does have legendary accuracy. It's zero to uh, plus 15 seconds a month. Now I've had this well over a year. Um, the only thing I've done on it is obviously change the hours. Um, and let me tell you, it hasn't missed a minute. It's still on the minute. Seconds wise, I haven't done a, um, a measurement to that, but when I check my phone, and obviously a lot of mobile phones run by the atomic clock now, uh, as soon as that changes, this changes as well. It's literally within a second or two still. So amazing accuracy, um, just to watch you can pick up and go. Now, let's go back to the dial. So let's watch this part. You've got the characters on the top left saying C H R. Okay, so now that is a chronograph. So if you press the B pusher here, that's change mode. So just look at that. Now everything's gone into stopwatch mode, but the way it gets it, the, the what it does, the whole like this little drama it creates. Um, it's a fantastic watch to just watch. Okay, so now you press the A button again, and there you got your stopwatch. Got a sweeping tick. Just look at the light bouncing off that blue. Stop it, reset, and do a full rotation. To put it back into your normal modes, and you'll see even the alarm hands, they've gone up to 260, so it can go through the timings. So now you just press this, and it'll reset itself. absolutely fantastic so uh, with the in terms of changing the alarm and stuff that is covered in the manual um, so I won't go into the detail on that um, and it does look pretty complex but when you go through the instructions it is very easy to do that um, I wouldn't mess with the months and days I don't know how because it's been programmed I don't really want to mess with it um, just in case I get it out of sync so just you know just just give you a thought here and, and I look at the complications that this watch offers you this is why I absolutely love this watch uh, and I think you know um, put it this way some Tissots out there are double the price of this and you won't get that level of complications and they are still quartz watches so this watch is literally for the way it looks the complications on offer what it can actually do uh, it should be twice the price of what, what it is um, and this is Seiko's ingenuity in a nutshell. Now, the, the, I haven't seen, um, you know, something different by way of chronograph quotes from Seiko for a while now. Uh, all the new stuff is pretty much the same. I mean, I could be wrong. I don't really keep up to date. I like the, the older stuff, uh, which you'll be seeing. But as it stands, this watch absolutely is mind-blowing. Honestly, it is mind-blowing. You know, you might argue the dial is a bit busy, um, but for me, um, that is totally justified because of all the functionality it has, the features. Um, it's, an, it's just awesome to just sit back and just press the buttons and watch the watch going through all its motions and rotations. Everything's in sync. It's just absolutely beautiful. I could literally do this all day. And just reset it back to everything. Let's look at a wrist shot. So it is super, super comfortable on the wrist. I've mentioned previously about my wrist, so you know it's a six and a half inch wrist. Um, so it's an absolute great fit on the wrist. Sits quite flat, very comfortable, looks awesome as well.
could definitely wear this on a formal function. You can wear it to work, to the office. Um, and part of what makes it so comfortable on the wrist is how the case is. So this part will sit flat on your wrist and then it'll just literally curve over your wrist. No, it doesn't have any illuminated indices because it's not a pilot watch or a, a dive watch, obviously. So, um, more like a smart dress watch, casual even. Absolutely amazing. So, wrapping it up. My favorite things about this watch is one, is the level of detail that I've covered, the, the dial, the indices, um, the hands, just, the, just the, how aesthetically pleasing it is. Um, and the second thing is just the functionality. It gives you the complications. Um, they are mind blowing. And thirdly, just generally the you know the, the quality um, for what these were selling for. So I hope you like this review. Please subscribe. Let me hear your. Let's see what you think. Let's hear your thoughts in the comments. Um, and smash the like button. Thank you for viewing.